celebrating Black History Month, and we're bringing before you every week someone from our community who has been favored and graced for greatness. Someone who overcame the odds to be somebody great in our community. And last week we, we brought an elder vessel, an elder of our community. And this week we're bringing, uh, she's an elder in work, but not an elder in age. If I went and read her resume, we'd be here to tomorrow. She has accomplished so much in a short period of time. God has really blessed. And I want every young lady in here to see and hear her story because what God has done for her, he can do for you. Amen. She's a former president of HISD, Houston Independent School District, which is one of the largest school districts in the country. She's a member of the Black Caucus for Education, and it goes on and on all of her accomplishments she accomplished in a very short period of time. But her greatest accomplishment, she married one of my homeboys, Gerald Jones, from Cashmere High School. That's the, that's the biggest thing she ever did, all the other stuff. Is, Second day. Are y'all gonna catch me around with a bigger hand than that? Yeah. This is red, not for Valentine's Day. This cash been red. Yeah. Sister Jones, thank you so much for, for being a part of our Black History program. If you would, first of all, my first question, just share a little bit of your upbringing and what inspired you to believe that as a woman of color, you can accomplish all the things you've accomplished. What inspired you as a child to believe you can do what you're doing today? So first, give money to God. Thank you for having me today. Whenever I get to uh, come to the Lord's house, it's always a blessing, but especially when there are young people present um, that we can speak life into. Uh, I grew up in Cashmere Gardens. Um, mother went to Cashmere, father went to Wheatley, um, three sisters. But I remember when we were younger, my mother would dress us all alike, and people would say to us, oh, they're so cute. And as soon as they'd say that, my mother would say, but they're smart. And she said, always told us, yeah, you can be as cute as you want to be, but when HLMP, because it was HLMP back then, comes knocking at your door, you better be smart enough to figure out how to paint. Say that again. And so that I grew up with. Um, looks can only get you so far, but you have to have something up here Come on. to be able to do what you need to do in life. And um, I was, my, my father was a, a deacon, my mother was a deaconess, so back then we cleaned church every Saturday, no matter what you, whatever else you had to do. And they kept us close to God. Wow. And that's what I attribute, um, what, what following his purpose, that's how I attribute. Right. So your foundation is built on faith and service. Absolutely. You mean to try to hear what a deaconess and a deacon's cleaning church on service, I like that. <laughs> so, 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 so faith, your foundation was on faith, and then you started to climb up the latter. Right, so got an education, went to college, um, came back, um, now, and, and I'm going to say this to the young ladies, when God has a purpose for your life, it really doesn't matter what you're out there doing, because he will have his way. So I have to say, I was engaged when I met my husband. I'm going to say that again. I was engaged when I met my husband. So when God sends you a husband, Come on. Yeah. let no man put us under. See, I don't have to wonder if I chose the right one, because on. God sent him to me to get rid of the one I had chosen. You know what? And, and, and I don't regret a day of that, because I know my life turned out exactly how it would have turned out because where I am today, I couldn't be without that man. Because when I said I need to quit my job to do what I needed to do, he said, baby, I got you. And I had worked with that since. So I was able to join the school board um, after working in the community with children for a while and noticing that the, kid, the schools that I had chosen for my kids, our neighbors weren't getting the same things in those schools. So I started volunteering. And I believe Ms. Galloway was here last yes. week. Yes. So Ms. Galloway saw me volunteering. She said, I'm getting ready to retire, baby. And I need somebody like you to step in here. And when she said that, she said, God told me to wait. I was going to put somebody else here. But he told me to run again and wait. And he was going to send me somebody. And then came you. And I didn't even have an opponent. I walked in and signed my name. And I was taking the oath 
three months later. Wow. So what God has for you. Absolutely. And so now I just um, fight every day to ensure that our young people who are under the attack of not just man, but spiritual warfare, I work every day to ensure that I can give them what God has given me. I'll often, I pray for you and your family daily, and often I'll, I'll inbox you or text you and say, stop listening to those haters. They're, they're like the people in the audience who never scored a touchdown, but they can critique the play on Monday as they focus. But how do you deal with the hurdles? When, when hurdles and, and negative voices, and you on the battlefield, but yet people who have done nothing but self critique you. And if he can do that and still sacrifice for his fellow man, if he can do what he did and is subjected to what he was subjected to and give his life for us, then those little things those people are doing or saying are, are nothing. Amen. 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 So don't get sidetracked. My final question, like I asked Sister Galloway last week, if you can go back, other, other than Mary and Gerald, if you can go back to a 15 year old runner with all your experience, all your knowledge, all you've been through, you can go back and talk to a 15-year-old brother and give her advice. What advice do you give to your 15-year-old brother and all these young ladies who are saying, I don't know which way to go? So I have to say that when I was 15, I probably wasn't facing as much as these young ladies and men are facing today. The world has changed. The prophecies of revelation are coming true for them. And so um, it's a little bit tougher for them, but I, I would like to say to you, the Bible stands true. And it says in the Bible, God, the God, plans God has for you are to prosper and not fail. So it doesn't matter what everybody else is saying because God says that his intention for you is to prosper and not fail. And you may not know the plans he has for you, but he knows the plans he has for you. And so when you wake up every day, it's important that you live that way. You live as though you know you are prosperous because God has said you are. So the, the actions that you take, the words that you say, the things that you say, are ha or have to be as though it is. You are prosperous. You live as you are prosperous. You walk as though you are prosperous. You believe that you are prosperous. You see, there are a lot of people that have been elected that will that are doing things to keep us from being prosperous and are saying things to us to make us think we are not. But one thing about it is they control things. They don't control you. Amen. You control your bodies. You control your thoughts. They can't control your bodies. They can't control your thoughts. They can't control your abilities. You control that. And so every day you have to use those things, your body, your mind, your abilities, and your actions to walk in prosperity. And I guarantee you, nothing, nothing will transcend what you and God put together. Amen. Amen.